Now we're rolling. Hello, everyone. Um, this is good old Ben Jaffet coming at you, talking about, um, I saw the Super Suckers recently. Um, if you're not familiar with the Super Suckers, they are a heavy metal, like, motorhead, punk rock-esque band. They're very, very good. Uh, I'm not, I'm in no way about to knock them or say just anything shitty about them because they're really, really nice people and they're, they're astounding musicians. So let's just get that out of the way first. The show was really good. Really, really good. It was at, it was in Marietta last Tuesday. I went with a friend of mine. We had a really good time. Um, they played a lot of stuff off their new album, which is Get the Hell not get the hell out or get the hell in or just, just get the hell. Um, yeah. Owen's looking at me like, what the hell? Exactly. Get the hell. (laughs) Get, get the hell. I bought the CD off of the lead singer and bassist who was working the merch table indie shows. Um, but yeah, really nice dude. Shook his hand said, Hey, you guys are really good. He was very appreciative of it. Um, the thing I'm sure he wasn't appreciative of was that there were probably 20 to 30 people at the show. Granted, it was a Tuesday night. I understand that. But they are like a headlining act. Um, people die to play under them. I, I, I'd kill to play under them. Um, I think it definitely should have been a Friday show or a Saturday show. Um, hell even a Thursday show. Um, because I, and now I'm going to start bitching about how I hate local shows. <laughs> um, I don't go to too many because either this happens where there's no one coming to see a pretty good band. Um, or if it's on a Friday night and it's not a super good band and it's someone local that I just want to go and support, it's just a ton of people there that don't know the band, that just want to be on the scene, that just want to start fights, that just want to drink and, you know, hit everybody. And I'm not about that. I'm getting, I'm 25. I'm getting too old for that scene. I'm not, you know, 18, 19 years old anymore. I'm not going to be throwing beer bottles at people. No. So, uh, like I said, they played a lot of songs off their new album. They played a lot of songs off their older albums. Um, they were on Sub Pop Records in the early 90s. And then they kind of transitioned to doing their own record label. Um, which, there's, they still sound really good. I definitely recommend uh, you guys listening to them. If you're into um, any kind of just traditional rock and roll, or like even punk rock, or like some class not classical heavy metal per se, just like hard rock heavy metal. They're, they're a good band. All their songs are about drinking and, you know, girls screwing them over and all the old rock and roll adages that we've all come to know and love. So, and uh, they're very loud. They are very, very loud. They have very good amplifiers. They use Gibson equipment. Um, they have two guitar players using two Les Pauls only on the treble um, pickup selector, never on the rhythm, which is good. That means you're using the bottom pickup instead of their top or both, meaning they're going to get a lot more crunch out of their sound. Um, They do not use Marshall half stacks. They use, I can't remember what they use. It's not a Marshall half stack. It looks very similar to one. It sounds just like one, but they have um, four 12-inch speakers, and then they have probably about a 200 uh, anywhere from a 100 watt head to a 200 watt head uh, for both your amplifiers. Um, the bassist uses an Epiphone West Paul esque bass. It is a Gibson. And uh, the drummer's very good. I don't know anything about drumming equipment, so don't ask me about that stuff. Um, and I mean, they're, I mean, they're all about um, like, hey, like it's the guitar player's birthday. You should all buy them shots. And people were buying them shots. It wasn't his birthday. Because they're like, it's my birthday every show. So people were buying them shots. People were buying them beer. And, you know, that's cool. Like, that's a good gimmick for them. So, not to say it's a gimmick. They were probably having a really good time with it. Um, they also did something I haven't really seen too often in, like, the local 
show scene. I've, I've seen this happen when I saw Fist in the Tantrums, uh, where everyone's doing like a heart thing like this. They, they take a picture of everyone doing this. But um, the super suckers were like, okay, everyone get in the middle, get in the middle. Everyone just flip off the camera. And we all did. And at their bigger shows, <laughs> they posted pictures of on Facebook of everyone flipping off the camera. Um, this show they did not <laughs> because they don't want to advertise it. Only like 25 people were at the show. And uh, the person I went with uh, didn't do it because she was uh, worried about human resources violations where she works. And which I understand because my company, who her name was, uh, has a pretty similar um, policy about social media, et cetera, et cetera. And they don't want to see the had somebody of a something something do that and then some kids see it and you know i don't know and you you have that at your joint or kind of um you have to watch what you say around the right people yeah i mean it's pretty much the same for everyone like if jim a step oh shoot if uh (laughs) (laughs) whoops if uh jim gillespie wasn't he a murderer um, <laughs> potentially the CEO of whoever I work for um, I've said his name one here before <laughs> yeah if he would see that picture he'd be like oh that's cool he was at a show he probably wouldn't care but um, if it were in a different kind of context it wouldn't be very good so just as long as you don't say screw the company that you work oh no 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 yeah if you do that then yeah you're in trouble but yeah. if you just like are having fun and everything I don't think there'll be yeah, any that's, at all that's pretty much it and there's our talk about not safe for work. Uh, yeah. Um, I want to get back to talking about how local shows are kind of set up in our area. We live in the MOV, Middle Ohio Valley. Yeah, unfortunately. Which is, I'm not going to lie, it's not the worst place in the world you can live. Bangladesh is probably worse. But, yeah, um, for local shows, it's they do exist. And there are actually some decent local bands here. Uh, Horseburner being one that I'll throw out there. My buddy Adam Noe is the drummer for said band. Um, they're very good. If you want to listen to them, they're very much on that kind of rock and roll level, like Super Suckers or any band like that. Um, Adam, I demand a t-shirt for that. Um, <laughs> so, they just, when... The people that run these bars set up these shows, they're obviously paying these bands. They're booking them and saying, here's X amount of dollars, you know, um, up front. This is what you're going to get besides what you're going to make at your merch table. And either one or two people are getting hurt because I'm not exactly 100% positive that's how they're running here. Um, They could also get paid by tickets. And if that's what happened with the super suckers, I should have given them two hundred dollars out of my pocket and said I'm sorry, um, because they would they wouldn't have made anything that night. Um, the, they had an opener. I can't remember the name of the opener. They were from Morgantown. They were very good. Um, they weren't really like a rock and roll band. They were a rock and roll band, but they were just more not as intense as the super suckers. Um, yeah, that's my whole take on the scene. I mean, I think the shows could have been set up better because it really could have been on a Thursday, Friday night. I think that would have had more of a draw to younger fans. Um, also, the place that this is at, the Adelphia, which is, is actually a really nice place. I'm not going to knock the place at all. Um, to my knowledge, those are all 21 and over shows because they have the bar there. I think if they did an 18 and over, it'd be a lot more successful. You'd see younger fans getting out there. I don't want anyone drinking underage or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. Um, I just think that it would definitely draw a bigger scene for them. And, and tickets would come uh, out. Uh, they were $15 a piece, which is not a lot to see. I mean, literally, this band has backed Willie Nelson. Um, they, they've toured... They've been around since like 88. They've been around for 25 years as long as I've been alive. So um, that's my take on it. Um, I do recommend picking up something that they uh, put down. They they have a couple albums on Spotify, if you have Spotify. Um, if you go 
on interpunk.com, they're on there. If you go on amazon.com, they're on there. Um, their old CDs aren't hard to find either. Sometimes, like a lot of people, um, when you're talking about old punk bands that had to switch labels, sometimes their old stuff is OOP out of print and you can't get it anymore. Well, that's not the case. Like their first album is like $7 on Amazon, which is a steal. It's so good. Cause like I said, if you're into songs about everyone's drinking, having a good time or the woman left you or whatever, they're all on there. So, um, anyway, that's my take on it. Um, I'll be talking to you about future shows coming up. I'm going to be seeing Elton John in our state's capital on the 11th of June, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I will be seeing Yes in the middle of July near Cleveland. So that's going to be awesome. Uh, yes is on my bucket list of bands. Basically, once I see Yes, Iron Maiden is pretty much my only one left. I've never seen Maiden. Um, I've seen Rush. I've seen... Dylan three times, I've seen Tom Petty three times, I've seen Motorhead, I've seen Boyster Cult. Um, I missed, I didn't get to see The Damned once. I was pissed. There's only one on my bucket list and it'll never happen. Who is it? I want to see Oasis. Uh, the full Oasis. That'll be hard. Yes, agreed. Yeah. I want to see Talking Heads. Come on, David Byrne, please stop fighting with them. It'll happen eventually. Uh, Better than no, a lot faster than Oasis. David Byrne really doesn't want to do that. <laughs> um, oh, well, you have your reasons, man. I respect the hell out of you. All right. Um, take your easy out there, guys.